Let's make this wall look like it's missing some bricks. To do that, I'm going to have to use the transparency channel. So if I look at this, um, I can see that I have something plugged into color, into bump mapping, and into specular. But now I'm going to plug something into transparency. If we go all the way over, that's fully transparent. And all the way the black, uh, it's completely visible. But if I paint this, I'm going to, I'm going to turn specular off. I'm going to turn graffiti off. And I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm going to name this one specular. And on this one, I'm going to paint black where I want it to be invisible. So if I go like this, okay. And if I click and hold down shift, I can create straight lines. Okay, great. And now I'm just gonna kind of paint a little bit closer like that. Okay, great. Now I can make a bigger brush holding down the bracket keys. Okay, great. There we go. Um, and now for my specular, since I want the rest of this to be visible, I'm going to paint that solid white. Excellent. That's what my specular map is going to look like because when I'm creating a specular map, I'm only thinking about where I want it to be visible or not visible. If I wanted it to be kind of visible, I could make it any shade of gray and think of that as a percentage of visibility. In this case, I don't want to see these bricks at all, so that's why I made it like this. So I'm going to save as, and I'm going to go into my... Um, project folder into source images jpeg and i'm going to call this um let's see brick transparency okay great now if i add that to this i'm going to go here so if i right click go to material attributes now i can go to transparency And I can go here, bricks transparency. Great. Now those bricks are gone. Okay. But it might not be totally what you expected. Uh, remember that we do have some specularity on these other bricks. And you can see that that specularity makes it so I can still see them. And I think the best way to think about this is like a balloon. Okay. A balloon could be totally clear and transparent. However, it's properties on the outside are kind of reflective so we have to or, and and pick up um, specularity so I feel like to get rid of that completely I would have to go back to the specular channel and um, oh I'm sorry this should not be called specular this should be called transparency okay um, but now if I go back to the specular channel and um, I'm gonna just go to my magic wand, select this, and now on the specular channel, I'm gonna go ahead and paint black. And may maybe I'll just do this on a separate layer just in case I change my mind about this. Okay, and that looks good for the specular, so I'm gonna call this um, specular bricks. Um, so now this is going to be the specularity. So I'm going to say zero specularity here, kind of uh, some specularity on the bricks, and then a lot of specularity on the graffiti. So let's go save as. And on this one, once again, JPEG, I'm going to call this bricks specular three. If this is all saved in the correct location, I can save some time. I can just right click material attribute. Now here under specular, specular color, I could just type in three and then hit enter. And there now you can see that it looks like it's completely gone. Uh, we might have to paint a little bit more black on the edge here. It looks like there's maybe a little bit of color on there uh, on the transparency channel, but you can really start to see how much power we have here. Remember, 
this plane that we started with is a single polygon, okay? But we have extra depth information, we have controlled specular information, and we have controlled transparent information. And if you think about this, if we look at what we did, we plugged in all of these different maps here, and the rule of thumb is this, color is kind of the lone wolf here because color is the only one that the color of it really matters. On all of these other ones, it basically plays off of black and white. Black being maybe 0% of the effect and white being 100% of the effect. So if you, um, you can see like incandescence uh, makes it feel like it's maybe a source of light. So if we wanted maybe this to be kind of lit up more or something, I could make an incandescence map on Photoshop. And if I plug it in here, 100% white would do that. Or I could have a kind of a percentage of gray. And if I had all black, it would be like that. So I could kind of determine where I wanted that to go. Probably doesn't make sense to use much of these other ones, but they're there, okay? Even things like under special effects, glow intensity, that could still take a black and white map. Uh, but you can see the importance of understanding this relationship of our materials and our, um, our object. Okay, so we have localized control on where we're putting stuff.